Oh, an easy way to make a lot of money? What if you could take out a low interest loan with no collateral down, and then you could leverage that money at a 10 to 1 ratio and loan it out again yourself and keep all the interest on all that money that you created yourself out of nothing. You get to keep all the interest. Well, you and I can't do that, but that's what banks do. It's basically a license to print themselves money. They create money out of nothing, they lend it out, and they keep all the interest. Even if the loans go bad, the banks don't suffer the loss. The taxpayers are forced to bail out the banks. It's a complicated system by design, but when you simplify it, you will see that the banks are basically printing themselves free money. They're creating money out of nothing, they're keeping all the interest on that money, and then extinguishing the principal at the end of the year. It's basically a convoluted form of counterfeiting. Think about it. Does a bank produce anything of value? Do they have any product or service? No, they don't. Yet look at the skyline of most major cities in America. It's dominated by banks. All that wealth was transferred in exchange for no product. Today, half of the profit among the top 500 U.S. companies comes from banks. Now, it didn't used to always be this way. Banks didn't used to be able to print themselves free money. Before 1912, under a free market system, banks actually had to go out and get hard money deposits and then reloan that money. The problem is that most people were smart and they weren't going to deposit their hard money with a bank and have a bank uh, try to loan it out and keep part of the profit and then default if the loans went bad. So banks always had a lot of difficulty getting hard money deposits. In 1912, though, they were able to pass the Federal Reserve Act. The Federal Reserve created a central bank, which could create money out of nothing and give it to banks as, as a deposit, as an initial deposit. Then the banks could use fractional reserve banking to increase that free money by a value of 10, and then loan all that money that was made out of nothing and keep all the interest. So ever since 1912, banking has grown exponentially in the United States. Now a lot of people don't see who's, who's the loser under this system. So what? So the banks have gotten rich. Well, if you get rich and you don't produce anything, somebody's losing to transfer that wealth to you. Who's losing? Well, one loser is the American taxpayer who has to bail out the banks that do still manage to fail from bad loans. But a much bigger loser is just the average American in general. Because all of this money being printed and skimmed by the banking industry causes inflation. Inflation is necessary for this system to continue, otherwise the banking loan cycle would collapse. Now who's hurt by inflation? by all Americans, especially the Americans that save money and the Americans on fixed wages. Those are the people that are really hurt by the banking industry, and it's a very subtle form of theft. But it is theft. It, it transfers the value of your money to a bank because the banks have inflated the money supply and they have kept the extra inflated money. Try to view a simplified version. Imagine there's a small town that has all the normal industries Plus, in this small town, there's a counterfeiter who can print as much free money as he likes. Well, what's going to happen to the townspeople? They're, first, they're going to lose the value of their savings because the counterfeiter is going to create inflation and the savings value of the townspeople is going to be diminished. After that, the, t the counterfeiter is going to buy up all the goods and services that he can. And the townspeople are going to wonder, why do I have to work harder every year to buy the same goods and services as before? But the harder the townspeople work and the more they produce, it'll just all be bought up by the counterfeiter. Every year the townspeople are going to try to work harder and harder thinking that maybe this year I'll be able to buy more. But the more they produce, the more the counterfeiter will buy. It's an unwinnable game. And yet that's what's happening in America, just like it would happen in a small town with a counterfeiter. Now a lot of people, when they finally understand the system, they get very frustrated with it and angry, and they think that they've got to rally everyone to some reform movement. Well, I hope that happens someday, but it's really not likely. Most people don't understand the system. Very few people do. And for a reform movement to come about, you would have to have a large percentage of the population understanding the system. 
Henry Ford once said, it's well enough that the American people don't understand the financial and monetary system because if they did, there'd probably be a revolution before tomorrow morning. And the thing is, nobody understands the system. And you don't have to get frustrated with it or angry. There's a much better way. You don't have to re rally all of America to reform the system. All you have to do is free yourself. Freedom from a parasitic system will always hasten the collapse of that system. Look at communism. It wasn't defeated by a popular uprising. Communism was defeated because the people in those countries simply stopped allowing themselves to be exploited. And finally the system went broke. If the American people and any other people under a central banking system, which is most of the world nowadays, if the people under those systems simply stop allowing themselves to be exploited and transfer their wealth to the banking industry, then the system will gradually collapse. Now, the thing is, hardly anyone understands how to cut off this subtle flow of wealth to the banking industry. Once you understand it, though, you'll become wealthy yourself, and you will hasten the collapse of the central banking system, which is parasitizing the whole society. In the last five years, I've earned about an average of 20% on my investments. I'm wealthy enough now that uh, I'm no longer a victim of the system. None of my money is transferred to the financial industry anymore and to the banking system anymore. It wasn't always that way. It took me a long time to understand the system. But once you understand the system, you're not a victim to it anymore. And you don't have to be angry and frustrated about it. I want... I'd like everyone to be able to understand how to stop this subtle transference of their wealth to the banking industry. So how do you do that? Well, remember, the banking industry thrives because it's able to inflate the currency by creating money out of nothing, and then it's able to skim a percentage of that inflating currency. If you can protect your savings from inflation, then you're not transferring any of your wealth to this inflationary cycle that fuels the banking industry. So how do you protect your savings from inflation? The traditional way of protecting savings from inflation is to invest in hard money assets like real estate or commodities. Let's say everyone was invested in gold, for example. Then it wouldn't matter how much money the banks printed and created out of nothing because everyone's savings would still have its underlying value and the system of currency inflation would collapse very quickly, and yet the individuals would retain their value as gold. Um, that's why banks and the government don't like individuals to own precious metals it undermines this inflationary currency system. And for much of the U.S. history under the Federal Reserve Act for the last 90 years, it's been illegal for Americans to own gold. In many countries in the world today, it's still illegal for the citizens to own gold. Luckily, this is such a blatant form of repression that uh, most Americans reject it, and, and today we're allowed to own gold for the moment. Um, so by investing in commodities like gold or real estate, you can free yourself from this subtle transference of your wealth to an inflationary system. Once you've freed yourself from that type of, uh, of theft, then you can actually save money. And then you're free from the banking loan cycle. You see, if you can't save money and you can't retain wealth, then guess what? You're forced to go to a bank to take out a loan for everything. And these loans, of course, are given at uh, a rate that basically indentures you to the bank. Think about most Americans. If they ever stop working, their house is taken away, their car is taken away, most Americans are basically living as indentured servants to a banking loan system.